Are you tired of a school system that stifles creativity and limits possibility? What if we told you there's an alternative, a transformative haven where education becomes an exhilarating adventure? Join us as we unveil the extraordinary world of the Hive Adventure World Schooling Hub, where traditional schooling fades away and limitless learning takes flight. In this video, we're embarking on an adventure to attend a six-week World School Hub session at the Hive Adventure in Cabrera, Dominican Republic. I discovered this program on Instagram sometime in the last two years and finally decided to enroll our four and five-year-olds in the Climate Action Session. I'm gonna show you what a typical day is like at the Hive, how the learning flow works, and the awesome community that comes along with it. I love the fireside. I love the fireside. When the lights are low. No two days at the Hive are alike. That's part of the beauty of project-based learning. Field trip day at the Hive today, and they invited the parents along for the adventure. Each session at the Hive is focused around one of the United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals. We are going to go on a mindful walk. What does that mean? Our session was focused all around SDG 13 climate action. During the first week of classes, the staff invited us parents to join them on a field trip day where they were going to visit a dried up riverbed and then visit a flowing river to try to analyze why one of them had dried up. Name is Baby Lizzo. Oh, Baby Lizzo. <laughs> Typical school day at the Hive, crossing the river. She likes a challenge. It's very professional. The day included hiking, a river crossing, and curious questions from our little change makers. Something I really appreciated about the Hive was just how much involvement they wanted from the parents. It felt like us parents and the educators were partners in the pursuit of educating. Today the Hive is researching foods that are better and worse for the environment and trying to figure out if there are certain types of different products that are better for the environment. Like one student is studying cheese today and trying to figure out is there one type of cheese that is better for the environment? How bad is cheese for the environment? So they all have a different food assigned and they're working in small groups to do some research and trying to kind of figure out food and its relation to climate change. Well, it's a reddish color. It's a coppery reddish color, right? It's oxidizing and breaking down. One of the weeks during the climate action session was focused all around having healthy soil. These are the very, very top layer. Okay. The kids did a soil experiment, but they weren't quite sure how to interpret the results. So I do have knowledge about it, and it's a lot about the chemistry. Scott is a geologist, so naturally they invited him in to be a guest teacher that day, helping them to understand what was happening with their experiment. Then we as people have been around. During the six week session at the Hive, students embark on a big project that they present during the final week to all the families. And I'm working on my project because I have tons of these tabs, and I'm doing a project on the worst foods and the best foods for the planet, and also dairy farms kill baby cows. That is true. And just about a lot of the ways that we make food and how it's made, like the process, is really bad for the planet. So I'm just Students are guided on topics related to the sustainable development goal during the first few weeks while deciding on which topic they feel most passionate about and want to create a big project around. With poop? A poop game? Of course a poop game. What else would we play? This is our project. Our project is to reuse plastic. Um, and we, we use bottle caps to, and to make coasters. Um, for drinks, as mom, more here. That's my favorite. And we also um, have made earrings, but I've lost them. So. We have a start, and we start, and we stop. I mean, that's our first week was about the climate five. And then the second week was about food. And we go on the third week, which is about soil. There's lots of different pictures. We have a soil experiment here, which is right here. 
then we have projects, and then we have projects, and then we have presentation day. While the older students, ages eight and up, work towards one big final presentation, the smaller students from ages three to seven work on a new project every single week, and then they choose which project they loved the most to present to all the families. So their projects are based on those parts that they really felt passionate about and they really felt good about. And most importantly, I think that they've been learning how to interact with each other and how to really think about how they're feeling. Aha! What's your favorite regulating activity? Aha! Uh -huh. I was super impressed by Atlas and Hermes project, which was actually about a self-regulating technique they learned instead of something related to climate action. I love that our kids learned how to check in with themselves and how to make changes according to how they were feeling. And then you make another, then you do another song. Well, actually, yeah. On presentation day, we began learning from the mini hivers. Tell us about your project, Kyle. Project is about music and learning music. How you go and learn? You find a place, then you dig a hole, and then you put the tree in the hole, and then the rain water the tree, and the sun makes the tree have heat because. Then nobody can breathe. They don't plant trees. Why is that? What do trees do? They breathe in carbon dioxide and they breathe out oxygen. These are the roots. This is a stem. And these are the branches. This So we were super proud of this little leaf, right? Why is that leaf so important? Why was we so proud of it? Because it looks like a real life leaf. It was kind of perfect the way he drew it, right? So proud of you. We had the privilege of learning from each child individually in an open house style setting. How to save Earth. Do right. Do right. Like, don't use cars. Do plant a tree. Don't eat pasta. <laughs> Do ride a plane. Don't, uh, I mean, don't ride a plane. Do ride the train. Do share what you know. Don't cut down trees. <laughs> It was really interesting to see which topic fueled the fire in each child. Oh, I hope that this rainbow, yes, and he really worked hard because he, we had these stencils and he was really trying to find the perfect stencil so it didn't just happen we're just going to draw this, we have to find the perfect stencil which took about 15 minutes for us to look so. And also how each kid chose to present the information. And so this session we've been looking at um, Sustainable Development Goal 13 which is taking action for the climate and on paper doesn't necessarily look like it might be that interesting at first glance but what we've been really working on with your children is allowing them to find their voice to find something that they care about something that lights them up that they're interested in and they've been working with people who don't have the same shared language, don't necessarily have a shared background, they've never met before, they've crossed different ages, and they've formed these little alliances and friendships and supported each other to produce these projects. These kids got a lot of freedom during the Hive session, and it was really beautiful to see what they could accomplish when we gave them the room to spread their wings. Another part of the Hive that we loved was the big focus on community. And I don't just mean community service projects. I mean being together, hosting fun events, and enjoying the company of people from totally different walks of life, but who all share one thing in common. We're all rejecting the status quo and instead designing our lives and our children's education. The Hive threw a barbecue and bachata night where we learned to dance the traditional bachata dance. Another super fun family event that the Hive hosted during our time there was a boat day in the neighboring town of Rio San Juan. 
Today is the Hives boat trip here in Rio San Juan. We all met at the coast in Rio San Juan and squeezed into a tiny motorboat. Okay. Look how beautiful it is. Are you coming on? Heck yeah, I'm coming on. <laughs> We headed to our first snorkel spot, Laguna Grigri, a crystal clear beach with shallow water just minutes from where we launched. What are you looking for? Turtles. 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 No, not that. I said turtles. Turtles. I said two doors. Two doors. Two doors. Two doors. From Laguna Grigri, we shuttled the boat over to a mangrove forest with the most beautiful blue green water. The spot is lovingly known by locals as El Ponton. Oh my gosh, Theo. Serious business up there. It was a beautiful place for the kids to climb trees, swing into the water, and jump off the boat. Cueva de las Golondrinas, a sea cave where the water reaches over 60 feet deep. The strongest swimmers of the group jumped in for a refreshing dip before we all loaded up and headed to our last stop of the boating trip. Playa Caleton. Nestled along the Dominican's north shore, Playa El Caleton captivates visitors with its secluded charm, offering a harmonious blend of rugged rocky cliffs, interesting statues, and a sweet rope swing creating an idyllic and super fun beach experience. Hey, hey, load him up! Come on, Bjorn. <laughs> yeah! That's good. A nice straight line. Yeah. <laughs> You gotta let go at the end! Say it again! Say it again! Say it again! These community events can really help a traveling family to feel at home while on the road. Two of the students from the Hive partnered up and organized a beach cleanup day as their final project at Playa El Breton, located directly across the street from the Hive. I am walking down to Playa El Breton right now, where the kids have organized a beach cleanup. We arrived to find the beach littered with all types of trash, from plastic to clothing, but it was primarily styrofoam. The educators, parents, and community showed up to support the students and to help clean the beach. In about two hours time, we had made some serious progress on our little patch of beach, filling up the entire dumpster and having more than 10 bags piled up on the side of it. Today is the kids' last day of school here at the Hive Adventure in Cabrera, and we're having a party! Bye!
One of the dads was a DJ, so he brought his full setup for jamming, and the kids swam. I can't remember the last time I saw so many happy kids in one place. Good job, Andy! <laughs> During our final party at the Hive, while waiting for dinner to arrive, a few of us snuck across the street for one last adventure to Cabo Frances Viejo, the old lighthouse of Cabrera. Right across the street from the school is El Breton and the old lighthouse, Cabo. Cabo Faro? I'd say crispy in Spanish. Crujiente. <laughs> It was hard to imagine that this would be our last night together as a school and as a community of world schooling families. <laughs> if you find yourself in Cabrera, this hike is a great place to take in the ocean views from above. Hello! Hello! Just hanging? Or way up in a tree. <laughs> yeah, but we're the only one that we need to get down, right? Melvin gave our kids one last pull-up challenge on a Whoa. tree, and just like that, our time at the hive came There's to an end. There's a stick on there. Oh, oh, look at that. On my sticks! On his sticks! Woo! Woo! I was, I was like this! this. Amazing! I believe. Hold on, Aya! Woo! Here you go, baby! Get out of the way. Luna! Fuerte! <laughs> Yay, Luna! Our six weeks spent at the Hive Adventure are among our most memorable weeks of travel as a family. Being a digital nomad or a traveling family can be really lonely sometimes. It can be really challenging to find people who relate to our experiences. This is why World Schooling Hubs can be such a positive experience for families like our own. It brings us a sense of community while still getting to do what we love best travel. If you're interested in trying out a World School Hub like The Hive, be sure to add your name to the waiting list for the World Schooling Map, which will be coming out later this month. The World Schooling Map is the most in-depth guide to World Schooling Hubs from around the world, and it even features exclusive discounts and bonuses to many of them. That's it for today on Conventionalist. I'll leave the links below for The Hive Adventure and for the World Schooling Map waitlist. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss our next video, and until next time, keep exploring life outside the box.